it feels really good to have you all in this video e sectional lecture series a uh, lecture series on 18 arc 6.3 building services 3 that means it is for undergrad architecture students under vtu this subject deals with air conditioning mechanical transportation and fire protection uh, before we begin i am mahant i did my architecture from nit trichy and masters from sp in new delhi and i'm working with mysore school of architecture and uh, it is important that i thank uh, my uh, principal professor sapna shivakumar for the opportunity and the trust and it is important for all of us to acknowledge the time and effort btu e learning team which is putting all these efforts to get this uh, lectures across in the right platform and that uh, takes us to the next slide let me let us get without wasting much time we will get on to the next slide so this subject has three components one is air conditioning next is mechanical transportation and the third one is fire protection professor dakshayani had completed air conditioning professor arjun had uh, dealt with mechanical transportation and that leaves us with the last two modules which is on fire protection uh again before we actually get into the subject let me make things easier and clear uh, when this online mode is stepped in most of us had difficulties even though we had adapted to uh, most of it uh, just to make things clear and easier this i have tried to make sure the font sizes of the actual the content which is being projected is big enough that it can be even seen in a mobile device and the conversation the online mode you know the attention span just because you're looking at a screen some of us have difficulty or most of us have difficulty in extending our attention span for a longer time and it is also known to cause eye fatigue visual fatigueness so i have divided all the the next two modules in such a fashion that i'll give you a pause uh, after every 20 minutes or say the maximum is going to be 20 minutes in which you can go through the summary of the video just uh, re recollect whatever has been dealt or you can take a pause before you go on to the next phase which is the next 20 minutes right so if this is clear let us move on to the next so the syllabus uh, for the next last two modules talks about introduction uh, which is to the fire what fire is all about and all that then concepts in passive fire protection and the next is active fire protection so one is introduction to fire then we have passive fire protection then active fire protection and finally it concludes with nbc requirements fire safety but all that all that we are going to discuss is completely based or mostly 70% of it is going to be based on nbc uh, which is national building code and i'll be referring to the 2016 uh, version Uh, before again we get in i always have uh, this as an example the ego ego equation in building services so imagine three three four friends of us who are actually good at their own work they have they're equally talented they're equally skilled and all that but because of something stopping them uh, they will not like each other's growth or contribution so this uh, building services Uh, i always give this uh, uh, example uh, in fact the vtu syllabus starts with uh, building services one plumbing services number two uh, electrical services number three ac fire and lift and number four acoustics keeping acoustics as a specialization the other three if you take if you must have realized in all these years of architecture all of them are important for any building to function right all of them are equally important for any for any building to function in fact they help each other to function ac needs fire uh, water needs to be pumped through electrical requirements right so they always have something in common so they need each other but the problem is why i bring the ego, ego equation here is all of them require their own shaft they can't be merged they can't be put together that is when they feel the clash of importance between them so as an architect as a designer as a, a service consultant we should be uh, knowing and be aware of what these three are and how we can make them work 
towards you know the better contribution in a building than to make them clash and you know we are going to suffer forever because of the mistake that we did in terms of the services <clears throat> even here uh, in this subject there are three components ac lift and fire all of them are highly interrelated whenever i talk about anything in fire i'll try to give uh, apt references to uh, the mechanical uh, transportation and the mechanical ventilation part but try to always relate whatever concepts that we are going to study in fire with the other two and other services if possible so this session the 20 minute session uh, is going to have uh, three parts one is the definitions and basics and uh, the part two is going to deal with classification of fire causes and hazards grading of structural elements and part three we will conclude with combustible and non-combustible materials right so each of this will go for a maximum of 20 minutes post which you can have a break but before that i have given my mail id in the first slide so some of the quizzes some of the quizzes or questions that i start in any of these sessions i will not completely answer it uh, i'm sure it will be very easy for you to figure out but if there are any confusion somebody is willing to take up a debate or wanting to have a further discussion you can always write to me and i'm an architect that also tells there are definitely experts in this uh, fire protection and prevention field if there is any mistakes always open to correct so starting with the first part fire definitions and basics so we all know what is fire right so before i get into this this slide we already seen i'll skip this slide what is fire fire i'll explain you this but let me first read the uh, text fire is a process involving a rapid oxidation at elevated temperatures accompanied by the evolution of heated gaseous products and the emission of visible and invisible radiation so this definition is according to firesafe.org uk let us take another definition fire start when a flammable or a combustible material with an adequate supply of oxygen or another oxidizer is subjected to enough heat if we have to understand what is causing fire let me take this which is getting repeated in both the uh, definitions one is oxidation which is say oxygen then they are talking about heat right this is again talking about heat then there is also something which is happening here which is combustible material so oxidation and heat is uh, going to be common here they also talk about products so with identification of this is one two three fire needs all these three to survive or to even start right so we have three i'll move on to the next one where uh, we identify three elements of fire one is can you recollect from the previous slide one is oxygen second is a combustible material third any guesses do you remember i'll go to the previous slide third is heat right so i'll want to the next so whatever we said one is combustible material which is here next is oxygen third is fuel right so these are going to be the three essential elements for any fire to start so this is called as the fire triangle so over years we have figured it out figured out saying these three are going to be highly essential for any fire to start uh, but which also means if we have to extinguish fire we have to extinguish any of these three at least for a fire to completely get extinguished right but there is another problem here or problem it's not a problem let's say evolution so over the years when we have accepted this as the uh, uh, major elements for a fire to sustain uh, research uh, researchers later figured out 
it is not just the three which is causing the fire we have a fourth element or let's say this is a this is more of a process which is a chemical chain reaction right so once when they figured out it is not just those three elements and there is a constant and a rapid chemical chain reaction is taking place this is when they introduced this concept called fire tetrahedron so the fire triangle became a fire tetrahedron right so so this is a, a way to remember uh, the first three elements that we spoke about one is the fuel one is the oxygen one is the heat energy and all three once when they are present they have to undergo a rapid uninhibited chain reaction for a fire to sustain and grow further right let us just quickly take a look at uh, these one is the fuel fuel what is, what is a fuel here the fuel is a material itself that begins the process of combustion when a particular material is heated beyond its flash point the material becomes a gas it enters a gas gaseous state and starts releasing vapor that can ignite in air this vapor which is released after its flash point is going to support further combustion second is the heat energy this is going to be produced during combustion because the re reaction here is exothermic it is going to release heat since these reactions are ongoing combustion ongoing combustion releases more than enough heat to make fire self perpetuate right so the third element is oxygen oxygen of course as all of us are aware it is there at all the times but if at all we have this question of oxygen is there always so why there is not fire on any and every material that is surrounding us it is because of the amount of oxygen in the air it is not uh, mixing with the other three elements to cause fire when it goes beyond a certain point and that is where the fire starts so uninhibited chain reactions or when heat is constantly being produced as a result of ongoing reactions so this is uh, if you have to relate adding fuel to the fire may not be appropriate here but yes so the other three which is oxygen fuel and heat energy is already giving enough content for the fire to go, grow at a rapid pace and this inhib uninhibited chain reaction is in fact supporting and accelerating the growth of fire with this we will just go uh, to a set of questions before we conclude the first 20 minutes to see imagine this image which is being put here in stone age if you again if you go back in time uh, uh, we, we all know man uh, first uh, produced fire by rubbing the stone can you all try to understand how the fire is started and what are the three uh, don't uh, go, we don't have to go to the fire tetrahedron concept but can we try to understand the three elements in the fire of the fire triangle which is the fuel oxygen oxygen and the heat where is all three in the material that he is they must have used to produce in a fire right so of course we have stone that gives a spark that gives a spark and not a fire that gives a spark so try to understand and answer this question of identify the fire triangle in the image shown here right and we will not stop there i will show you another image forest fires which is very common very rapid these days and it's a uh, more of an environmental concern in the previous image we had somebody had voluntarily or uh, you know tried to create fire whereas in this image there is no uh, certain effort by anybody to create fire so these are naturally occurring fires so somebody started the fire there is enough material to burn there is enough fuel in other words to burn so somebody started the uh, heat factor also 
and there is enough oxygen in the forest. So now again I will leave you with this question also to figure out the fire triangle and how does it spread. So one is the fire triangle in this who created how did the first three elements come into where, which are the elements, which are the possible elements of the fire triangle and how does it spread. And that I believe this as an introduction is uh, good enough for the first 20 minutes and from actually the next 20 minutes we will be entering into the second part of the first lecture the next 20 minutes. So now let's take a quick break. So we are in the part 2 of our first session on fire protection. We are going to talk about classification of fire causes and hazards. Uh, I will be majorly referring to uh, national building code and several IS standards. Uh, the reference material will be put here in the bottom of each slide. You can easily refer to that. At times we also refer to some of the NFPA National Fire Protection Academic standards from uh, US and also some of the UK standards. So the classification of fires, uh, this is from IS 2190-2010. According to this, so the fires are classified uh, majorly for the purpose of extinguishing them. So. Uh, when you know what is the material which is contributing towards the fire from our uh, fire triangle. So we are talking about the fuel. So based on the nature of the fuel involved in the fire in order to extinguish them that is when the fires are actually classified. So we have four uh, types of fires classified according to our IS standards. One class A, B, C, D. Class A is going to be uh, the fires which is created out of solid combustible materials remember solid combustible materials all of them are definitely going to be combustible materials so keeping that away we are talking about solid materials examples are wood paper rubber plastics so now you can relate to the materials that we are talking about but we are talking about solid materials class b moves on to liquids or liquefiable solids so class a is solid Class B is liquids and it, it also says, uh, sorry, class C fires are going to be flammable gases. So we started with solid, moved on to liquid, third is going to be gas and class D is going to be a little, uh, you know, uh, special in terms of, we are talking about metals, metals which are combustible. Uh, of course, metals are solid, but we are talking about the state in which they are. So, uh, class A is going to be solid material, solid combustible materials. Class B is going to be liquid. Class 3 is going to be gas. And class 4 is going to be flammable metals. Right? So, this is from our IS standards. So, now, I told you, what are the other standards that we can refer to? US, UK. Let's see what they have to say. Uh, this is from UK. So they have class A which is solid material very close like us and class B flammable liquids okay given. Third is going to be flammable gases given. Class D is going to be metals again given but they have two more class E fires caused by electricity and electrical apparatus or equipments right so this is class e and class f is specially for fires which are ignited with oils and cooking fat right so the first four are going to be common a b c d solid liquid gas and metals and two more one is because of the electricity one is by cooking right so this is from the UK. Again, I'm telling you, so this is developed, the classification is solely for the purpose of extinguishing. So when we talk about, study about extinguishers in the later uh, modules, we will try to understand it in a, a more detailed manner, but with this understanding is good enough for us to, under, uh, for us to figure out on what basis these classifications are made. Now, this is NFPA, National Fire Protection Association from US. 
they have a b c d and k so a no difference combustible ordinary solids b liquids no difference c there's a difference here which is life electrical equipments d combustible metal no difference and k which is commercial cooking equipments right there are slight differences between some of them are common some of them uh, are differing so it is good to understand and remember on what basis all these are classified in terms of the fuel so that uh, leaves us with a, a basic understanding on the classification of fire because uh, like i told you oxygen is always there uh, the heat when it is going to go beyond a particular uh, temperature flash point so what is changing in the fire triangle is always the material which is the fuel combustible material so based on that fire is classified and now that we know the classification of fire let us understand the causes and hazards causes this is again from nfpa national fire protection association us statistics this is in the of course usa context but let's understand how uh, their country is facing major majority of the fire accidents so first number one as per the data that they have collected number one cause of accidental fires is because of the cooking equipments this is also the number one cause of deaths and injuries which is caused from fire so number one is from the cooking equipment number two accidental fires is from the heating equipment they have winters so they have heating equipment the usage of heating equipment is uh, more than the context that we live in number 3 is going to be the because of the electrical distribution now we understand why they have a separate classification uh, if i am not wrong class anybody remembers should i go back so class c is live electrical equipments right so now we understand their one of the major causes of accidental fire is due to the electrical distribution systems and number 4 cause of accidental fires is intentional intentional yeah number 5 cause of accidental fires is smoking so this is again from the nfpa data we will move on to uh the hazards we again come back to is 2190 2010 there are three types of hazards one is a light or low hazard second is the ordinary or moderate hazard third is the extra or high hazard there are three types of hazard referring to our own indian standards let's see what they are so light and low hazards so again we have to we spoke about fire classification we are talking about a material which is contributing to the fire triangle so now we again have to go back to the classification to understand the type of hazards right so i i am sure all of us know what is a hazard right yeah so so when we trying to understand hazard we should it is important to know uh, understand hazards based on the classification of fire which directly relates to the fuel right so uh, so the total amount of class a combustible materials including furnishings decorations contents is of minor quantity are we still remembering can we recollect what is a class a combustible material wait we will revisit this question where i'll read the second line where uh, class b flammable liquids are less than 4 liter and provided that they are kept in closed containers and safely stored so hazards are classified in such a fashion because we are studying building services we are talking about this hazard the quantity of them which is going to be stored in a particular space so we are talking about the building floor area that is why they are talking about less than the nature of the activity that is going to be performed in a particular floor in walls class b flammable liquids not more than 4 liters for whatever function that space is assigned for 
and they are kept in closed containers and safely stored. Now let us revisit this question that I asked you. How many of us remember what is class A fire and class B fire? Very easy. Most of us have figured it out. Class A solid combustible materials. Class B the answer is in the screen itself. Litter means it is in liquid state. So when we have all this the curtains, furnishing, sofa, mats and all these solid combustible material in a particular floor is of minor quantity. Minor is a relative term. This is okay. And class B flammable liquids in a specific quantity. So that particular space is going to be called as uh, its potential. It has got the potential to have light or low hazards. That means we've started from the bottom. We move to the moderate. We move to the high. Something is going to change in terms of the material. Something is going to also change in terms of the quantity of storage. Right. Next slide. So now, ordinary or moderate hazards where the total amount of class A combustible materials and class B flammables are present in greater amounts than that is expected in the first occupancies. Clear? Class A solid, class B they said 4 liters. So now they are saying anything more than 4 liters and something more than the minor quantity is going to be classified under this particular occupancy which is ordinary or moderate hazards. So we also have another point here where class B flammable liquids are 4 to 20 liter and provided that they are kept in a closed containers etc etc. So basically it was 4 before in the light and the low hazard. Now the range is increased. It can be 4, 2, it can be from 4. 20 okay so the first statement is also talking about that just that they give a hint about what they are talking about in terms of class a combustibles minor quantity now when they say moderate as it's going to be more than what is said in class a okay class b again it's going to be more meaning from 4 to 20 liters right so this is moderate or ordinary hazards that takes us to the extra or high hazards of course something is definitely going to be more than the previous two let's understand and figure out by the total amount of class a combustibles and class b flammables present in storage production use finished or combination thereof is over and above the expected occupant expected in occupancy is classed as uh, ordinary or moderate hazard flammable liquids may be more than 20 liter very simple class uh, sorry not class a uh, low or low, what is it low or light hazard we have minor quantities of flammable substances and four liters of class b fires fine and moderate it is going to be 4 to 20 something more than the minor quantity that is moderate or ordinary hazards so when we move on to the third stage extra or high hazards they say it is definitely more than the quantity specified in moderate or ordinary fires or hazards and the flammable liquids which was 4 to 20 has increased beyond 20. so this is what is 2190 2010 talks about hazards and this we understand we are talking about hazard we are talking about the occupancy like i explained to you the space in which the materials are going to be used in any format this particular definition is important in terms of they didn't just specify class a combustible class b uh, flammables and quantity they also said this is in storage or being produced or being used or it is a finished combustible product or it can be a combination of any or all of the above is over and over and above those expected in class B, which is a moderate or ordinary hazard. So understand anything that we see including a door if we have a wooden door which is highly capable of catching fire to the curtains to the mat to uh, the kerosene bottles that we store sometimes in our kitchen 
to a paper to the newspaper that you buy every day and stack it upon everything that is going to be there which is going to contribute towards the fire in any state that they are in is considered here that is going to be classified as any of these assets depending upon the quantity in which they are present okay so we started with classification of fires we moved on to the causes and hazards classification class a b c d in indian context uh, second is what hazards we also studied how fire is caused in the us context and we moved on to hazards three types of hazards light moderate and high the last part of this 20 minute session is grading of structural elements okay now we know we understood the furnishings that we are going to get in and put across all along our floor is going to be contributing to fire agreed understood now is it not necessary that we look at the materials that we use to construct our houses offices the built structure itself is going to be made of some of these materials which may be combustible may not be combustible so wouldn't it be interesting and necessary if not interesting to understand the materials that is happening around us to know what are they combustible non combustible let us take the help of is standard 1642 1989 here the definition says uh the design of any building and the type of materials used in its construction are important factors so the design i'll have a couple of screens here so don't mind me looking at a different angle if not the camera sorry so the definition which they have given is the design of any building design of any building and the type of materials used in its construction so one is the design itself then the uh, material science are important factors in making a building resistant okay resistant to a complete burn out so making a building resistant to a complete burn out and in preventing rapid spread of fire smoke or fumes so one is resistant to a complete burn out and to prevent the spread of fire right so how do we do it in terms of the design and also through the construction so this i'll tell you i'll give a, give you a hint of this design what we do material usage again what we do if we do this carefully this itself is going to prevent fire so this is called as a passive fire protection techniques we will come to it in the next module but remember this so now we understand we are talking about fire resistant materials that we use in our buildings all right so i'll move on to the next slide don't be afraid the text is relatively simple and easy i'll show you how so the fire resistance of an element of structure or combination of structure etc etc let's read it as element of structure alone this is not needed let's say is determined from one of the three methods so this method to test is from this is whereas this definition is from this is okay and easy in fact the is codes have uh, have so much to say that we just need to have this develop this knowledge on which is code to refer and when that's about it right so the information as established with research data the fire resistance one is somebody has published and calculated all that from the data which is available so that gives us how much resistant a particular uh, material is direct application of the results of fire so somebody tested it uh, tested on several materials and understood how much is the capacity of burn out or spreading the fires and third is on the basis for calculating fire resistance of a structural element so third is on the basis of calculating so we i'm just telling you this is probably not important for us from an academic perspective but yeah so there are several ways in which they have figured out some of these materials are going to 
burn quickly they're going to promote fire they're going to prevent fire and all that so that leaves us with uh, there are four types again from is 164 to 1989 they've classified there are four types so all that we have whenever we're going to talking about whenever we are going to talk about grading of structural elements there are going to be four types in which we can classify the uh, building types we will see what all four of them are from the tables it is going to involve a couple of tables from the IS standards now that I did something I'm going to dump it on you from IS standards require some patience and time and so before we begin we will take a quick break 20 minutes so yes the third uh, the next session the types of construction according to a fire resistance are classified into four categories type one two three four right i'm telling you so many classifications classification of fire hazard and uh, what else the causes don't get confused all of them are going to be a maximum of four to five four or four to six a maximum right don't worry type one type two type three type four construction the fire resistance rating for various types of construction for structural and non-structural structural non-structural non so there are four types by itself plus classified under two categories structural members non-structural members can anybody understand why we do why we do we even need to think of structural and non-structural because when there is a structural member which is getting affected by the fire non-structural members have nothing to do they have to collapse along when the structural members are intact and it is only the non-structural members which is carrying out the fire we still have time to run away and save ourselves that's why type 4 again two types structural and non-structural like i told you before the break going to be a good number of tables no need to panic try to understand the logic behind these tables there are so many tables like I told you, but I will quickly run through the next couple of slides to make you understand the one which is in the top left, walls, number one, columns and beams, floors and slabs, number two, okay, that's about it, okay, there are two, one is walls, not structural, then it is about columns and beams, floors and slabs, number two, structural material, right, simple as this. We will just quickly understand, I will read out the table so that you can understand what they are talking about without spending much time. Table one, fire resistance ratings of structural elements in house, fine, masonry walls, solid, required to resist fire from one side at a time, look at the depth in which they are talking about, only one side it needs to resist the fire. Masonry walls, hollows required to resist fire again from one side at a time. Frame construction or load bearing, again one side at a time. Frame construction, non load bearing, again one side at a time. Table 6, framed external walls, load bearing, one at a time. Frame external walls, non load bearing, only from inside the building, which is 7A. 7b framed external non-load non-load bearing required to resist only from uh, inside of the building 7c frame walls non-load bearing required to resist fire only from inside of the building so there are three classifications in which they will be talking about several details so that is done now columns and beams and floors and slabs Reinforced concrete columns as one particular table only for the concrete columns then for beams concrete floors concrete floors ripped open soffit encased steel encased steel columns and beams so they're talking about sides steel columns all four sides encased steel beams all three sides columns are going to have exposed uh, to fire on all four sides whereas beam the from the ceiling soffit three sides right so <coughs> timber floors timber floors several details 
again 15 14 15 16 all of them are talking about timber boards so before we stop this lecture uh, i have i'm not going to show you the uh, all the tables but we will quickly i'm sorry for this slide probably the just because a screenshot from the nbc you may have to zoom in and see this either neither ways anyways so uh, exterior walls this is our table one fire resistance rating per structural element so type one type two type three type four these numbers are the ability to withstand fire for load bearing non load bearing in terms of number of hours right so they talk about fire separation less than this much meter exterior walls so what is the building type it is going to belong come under so table two is for masonry walls so they start with reinforced cement concrete, unreinforced cement concrete, uh, no fines concrete, aggregate is what being talked about. Then again we have load bearing and not non load bearing and the fire resistance in the number of hours. This is the end of uh, this part. Uh, of course this is just I just extended by 6-7 minutes which is fine. We will still take a quick break before we move on to the next one. Hello. <clears throat> so now we are in the third part of our uh, fourth module, first subheading. Before that, how many of you are used to having spicy food? more spice in your food you know some foods are so spicy that it starts a fire inside your stomach definitely i'm not going to ask you to find out the fire triangle there keeping all the low lame jokes aside <clears throat> let's get on to part three uh, where we'll talk about combustible and non-combustible materials <clears throat> of course we will again take help from uh, nbc and is codes so before we get on to combustible and non-combustible materials uh, this subheading under module 4 also wants us to understand the classification of building types so we will jump into it right away <clears throat> the building types are classified into nine categories nine types very simple a b c d e f g h i no there's no i only difference is instead of i it is j so it is a b c d e f g h not i but j nine types right so a is residential we'll start from where we live residential <clears throat> where we study educational institutional assembly business mercantile industrial storage and Hazardous. These are the eight building types that NBC is uh, classifying all the building types as. <coughs> it is important to note that any and every building that our country is going to have that you must have seen in our country have to definitely fit under any of these nine categories. There is nothing more, nothing less. <clears throat> so the definition of all this there are several subcategories under each of these categories if somebody is interested NBC part 4 part 4 is where uh, they talk about fire but even otherwise this category the types of building types the classification of building types keep repeating in several instances <coughs> uh, throughout NBC so it is important or it is uh, in a way needed necessary to know all these building types so that we know which category uh, do we fall under or are the buildings that we are going to design is going to fall under <coughs> right so now that's said and done we will talk about combustible material and non-combustible materials this definitions that we see here is from <coughs> NBC part 4 we, I will read it out first, then we will try to see if our understanding is right or wrong. Combustible material is a material that in the form 
in which it is used and <clears throat> under conditions uh, under the conditions anticipated will ignite and burn first support combustion release flammable vapors when subjected to fire or heat right material in the form in which it is used and where you anticipate it to ignite burn support combustion first it starts igniting and starts burning just because it is burning it is going to support combustion <coughs> and while it is in the state of combustion it is also releasing several gases let's say vapors which is also supporting the combustion so this is combustible material i think without even the definition we all had some idea of a combust combustible material more or less our definition our understanding and this definition in nbc <coughs> matches i believe there is another extension to this definition one which says the material which either burns itself which either burns itself or adds heat to a fire when tested for non combustibility in accordance with the standard is 3808 1979 so the extension goes to such a <coughs> uh, 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 level that a material which either burns itself or it adds heat to a fire a fire which burns the material or this adds to the fire when when tested to non combustibility in accordance with there is a particular standard right so when there is a material and if we have to subject that material to the set of test for non combustibility listed in is 3808 1979 and if that material is failing uh, for non combustibility it becomes a combustible material this is as per nbc national building code 2016 part 4 so now non combustible material <coughs> makes it easy we can quickly say whatever is not obeying the first category in the previous slide is going to be non combustible simple as that right but let's see the definition again a material <coughs> that under the conditions anticipated will not ignite or burn support combustion or release flammable vapors vapors when subject to fire or heat in the form in which it is used and under conditions anticipated <coughs> very simple the previous definition wherever it is it says it will burn and support here we will say it will not go it is not going to burn or ignite or support combustion where they said it releases vapors here it is not going to release vapors when subjected to fire <coughs> right where it is used or in the condition where it is anticipated so the difference is very clear we started with combustible material from my standard sorry nbc then an extension then a non combustible material the defini by definition it is clear and so must be the understanding <coughs> now a quick exercise okay some of these exercises may be very silly but it's okay let's try to get things out and see how much we can crack out of this i have listed out a couple of materials say uh, nine such materials and you're going to take each of this and figure out if it is a combustible material or a non combustible material you can take your definition <coughs> you can take nbc's definition your knowledge apply whatever you have you know all that we are going to do is take each of these materials and identify if they are combust combustible or non combustible i'll do the first wood any guesses wood is definitely a combustible material right in fact wood is by far the most common combustible material and as you are aware it's going to be it's used heavily for all the structural purposes while the building is getting constructed so let's say wood is definitely a combustible material from now on this is you is going to do are we ready i'll do the glass glass any guesses non combustible those who of you have guessed it right very good others it's okay understand the nature of the material the material science keep guessing iron nails combustible non combustible kerosene oil 
obvious straw guess it keep guessing stone go back to our first lecture a stone age we created fire with stone is stone a combustible material or a non combustible material figure it out matchsticks obvious answer charcoal i don't know paper obvious again right so this <coughs> exercise is about identifying combustible and non combustible very basic materials now let us change some of these rules slightly for the next exercise link the application of combustible materials in the building industry wood we already know application what is application of wood hmm? okay sorry right. application of wood while construction after construction it is door windows furnitures what else <coughs> you can think of anything else mm our frames door window frames okay let's classify them as door and windows and frames and uh, tables furniture what else okay fine glass for that we need to know if glass is a combustible material we have agreed that glass is not a combustible material but of course something to be remembered when subjected to heat or fire for a long time they will not catch fire or support fire they are definitely going to break crack if not burn themselves out they are still not going to retain the original shape there are going to be damages but still they classify under non combustible material <coughs> glass okay we know the use of glass being extensively used whether we need it or not in most of the buildings that we see in today's context iron nails okay i think we'll take this whether it's a combustible or non combustible material let's understand the application of these if you have figured out whether it is a combustible or a non combustible material you will also know the impact that these materials would probably create in case if a building catches fire right iron nails that do we use joineries mm, kerosene oil kerosene oil as such we don't store or use but if in small households we still store kerosene oil if it's a huge building we store uh, diesel for diesel generator almost a close equivalent to kerosene oil straw <coughs> that do we use depends upon sometimes the partition the board that we use for our ceiling partition there is a uh, uh, this particle boards and all that have some straw content you figure out if it's uh, a combustible or a non combustible material stone the tricky question stone we know where we use stones bricks in our uh, building matchsticks we don't use but we store charcoal do we store use anywhere paper all around right so with this i think uh, we will stop this part as well so our module 4 first subheading is complete right so we will meet again in a second lecture with module 4 subheading number 2 where we will talk about active fire protection techniques passive fire protection techniques and some relation to nbc in the next 3 lectures thank you